throw their powder. They run the issues where um, they run the issues where um, you guys uh, is too thick because uh, it's too rounded the side walls. So now they uh, these new tips they they've removed the C curve a little bit. They call them non C curve, but the C curve still there. It's just not as um, curvy. If that makes any sense. So it's not like it's completely, completely no normal curve. So it has a really nice C curve to it. It's just, it does not, it's not too curved for a lot of people. Go ahead and hit that share button. This will be a fun set. I'm gonna be doing a uh, neon uh, French and then um, a new neon ombre, which is kind of hard using a neon color. And then I'll be doing a um, flame design over that. So it'll be a pretty, pretty, pretty design. It's a flower, you guys. Be a nice set. I'm just gonna clip down some here. The full tip of this is gonna be XL. I'm clipping down to make it a long. So XL to long. You can use the, the full length if you want to too. As you can see, I'm matching Kiriko to Kiriko, make sure they're all the same length. It's very important for pictures to have all the nails the same length. I'm using a very sharp scissor. I'm not using one of those, um, those, those, uh, clippers where you go like this because these c curve tips if you do something like that actually can create a big crease a nice sharp pair of scissors and just go right through and it will, it will take away the crease you know what i'm talking about the crease when you cut things and you have to leave a little white mark so yeah see I'm nice and long this is c curve is not that much compared to i don't know if you guys can use the other c curve before but this is not a c curve um and it's already tapered so it's already nice and tapered for me I should have taken a picture of this beforehand. Let me see your phone. Send me this picture later. I'm gonna take a picture of this to show people. Mm. All right. There you go. <laughs> and we're just gonna do primer and I'm gonna start with the ombre. I'm gonna start with the hot pink on the bottom. Um, I'm probably gonna be using wave gels 88 um, Dolly. This pink is pretty crazy. It's nice. And I use a nice nude that I've mixed um, on top to cover up the pink with the ombre. Then I'll draw flames in blue. Grab my monomer. I've responded to all messages for the classes, so check your DMs. Appreciate everybody's interest. I'm probably gonna use my 16 brush today. Bigger brush. This is my 16, uh, my flagship brush, the biggest brush I got, Arsenal. <laughs> hey Elizabeth, hey. Edgar, how are you? Please reply to messages. Um, I'll check um, Naomi. I. I replied to everybody yesterday, so if you just recently sent me a message, now we probably won't have seen it. Hey, what's up, Karen? How are you? So we're gonna go with this nice hot pink as the base. And I'm using my monomer, the Nail Dead monomer, so it's gonna be nice and medium consistency. Ooh, that's a big bead. I keep forgetting I'm going from my size 10 from yesterday. You can see the the monomer is medium, so it keeps the powder where I need to stay. Um, it won't move it until I want it to move it. I want to make sure I want to bring the powder down evenly throughout. Very slowly, because I want to use my brush because I want to make sure that everything's nice and even. I don't want like thick here, thin there, thick here, thin. I want a nice, consistent. Bring in the side walls, so I don't have to do, worry about too much about shaping. It's not gonna be too thick. Fuck off this excess. Keep my shape in. So now that we have a nice taper shape to that, everything's nice and crisp. One thick consistency, one even consistency from the base. They'll set me up for my ombre later. This is a size 16, as you see. It's 
You want to place my powder? The powder just stays. And when I want to move it, it moves. That's the one thing about uh, Wave Gel's powder. Ooh. I'm silly. I forgot to pin in my information. I make it look so easy. <laughs> Come on, Edgar. You're a student of mine. You know, you know this is this is not as easy as it looks, but it takes takes time. If I want to, you know, a lot of people want to uh, work with the powder when it's wet because they think that you know it's gonna flood. They get scared. No, you gotta just give it time. The powder is best to work it with when it's al dente, when it's about to dry, and you know you have the like a, a time limit how long you have to work with it. That's the best time to work with the powder. I want a nice one to one and a half credit card thickness, just like that. I have to charge your phone to watch. Hey, this is gonna be a fun set. Hey, I know this pink is beautiful, isn't it? Nice hot pink. And you see it doesn't marble. Do you see there's no marbling with this pink? You see like neon color like this, you'll see a marbling, maybe a light pink or a clear or something like that. A uh, white, but the way that Wave Gel has mixed this new the new formula, actually very, very nice. You can get these powders. This is 88 Dolly. WaveGelShop.com. You can use promo code Nail Dad. Look at that. When I wanna move it, it'll move. Right? I don't have to worry about running all over the place. It's all about control when you're working with acrylics. That's why in my Salon Ready course, um, when I'm, I'm teaching, that I've been teaching, um, I teach you guys how to control powder, um, how to use, you know, it's a technique. But yes, everybody does acrylic differently. I can't say mine's the best technique, but I'm saying when I teach my students, I wanna teach them to be like me. <laughs> be like Mike, so be like now Dad. So make sure that they take on my technique, you know? I'm setting up the base color for my ombre right now. So I'm going to do all the nails pink first. The reason why you do that is because you guys got to understand, um, you don't want to do ombre each finger is in like pink, nude, pink, nude. Because later on, when I do it, when I switch to the nude, I'm going to switch out my, my monomer because I don't want this pink tint in my nude. Um, you don't want to contaminate, you know. So I just pour enough monomer for you to use the pink to do all my 10 nails. Then I'm gonna just throw all the excess out, which probably won't be that much. And then I'm gonna get some fresh monomer so I can get my nude out. Um, so then my nude is gonna be nice and clean so it doesn't have any uh, neon pigment into it. So that's a lot of you guys make that mistake. That's why you're, you're, maybe you get contamination in your powder and your, your ombre doesn't come out the way you want it. Look at that, nice and crisp. You stumbled me across my page this morning? Oh, welcome for all the new people. That's why I appreciate everybody with the shares because, you know, some people actually benefit from this and I think it's good for you guys, you know, us to help out. And then when you share, it reach people, new people every day that maybe can benefit from this content. Um, get my brush. I just love that my monomer can turn any powder into this consistency. That's the one thing I love about medium consistent monomer, especially when a, with a powder like this, um, how wave gel is mixed. Most companies mix powder just like this nowadays, where it's very nice and buttery, and the monomer just takes over and makes it even that much more buttery. It's actually the monomer is the main factor for the butteriness of the powder, more or less. Because if I use a slow setting monomer, it will it definitely, uh, a slow setting monomer, it definitely won't be like this buttery, it'll be runny. I'm gonna show you guys the thickness right now. This you guys can see. This is about the thickness I go for. It's about one credit card thickness, okay? Look how clean that looks. Just drop the bead and look, it just sits there. Doesn't do anything to I I work with it. Monomer is the monomer is currently out of stock. I think there's like a few left. I had to reorder. Jeez, you guys went crazy. Someone bought twenty monomers when I had the sale on Labor Day. 
that's ridiculous. I didn't expect that. But I will try to get the six, uh, the 32 ounce for you guys soon, okay? When I do ombre with like neon colors like this, I gotta make sure that I pat down this area a little bit. Make that a little bit, uh, you know, flatter. Cause I wanna make sure that my new is gonna be the main, the main guy there. You guys see I'm consistently shaping, making sure that my shape stays nice and crisp, that tapered look. Look, the powder. Now I want to move it. It's going to nudge up a little bit, flatten it there. Bring the sides in. It's important to work from side in. You got to work from the sides in because if you don't work from the sides in, it's going to get really thick in the, in the outside and you lose your shape. So I'm always bringing it from the sides in. And I use my brush to actually brush. I'm not tapping, I'm not dabbing, I'm brushing top to bottom. And I'm brushing slowly. If I feel like this is too wet, I'm gonna be with the brush and I'm gonna be smoothed out slowly. What that does is it gives me a nice, even consistency throughout the nail so that I don't have any spots that are thinner or thicker. Pinch it off on the excess, reshape. And that'll give me a nice, even consistency throughout the nail. You guys see that? It's very nice and smooth, one thickness, okay? This is a 16. My flagship brush. I mean, once you get to this this size brush, guys, you really, like, you know, you really don't need to, like, go any higher. Like, I don't see any reason why you need a bigger brush than this, but other than the fact that you want to soak up more monomer. Using the brush to brush lightly. Yes, realize later on when I when I when I have to, you know, drill and shape. I don't have to do a lot of work with the the thickness, right? It's so evenly thin already, like is in like consistent right already. That later on I just gotta do maybe even just a buff, a quick hand file and a buff, and I'll be able to be done with that. It saves me a lot of time. A lot of you guys are spending a lot, like three hours on sets because maybe you're probably doing too much into the uh, shape, uh, the shaping and the the breaking down the bulk of the powder. Okay. I had, to, I had to do hours in nail salons. They use size 20. I mean, that's back in the day. You know the reason why nail salons back in the day um, uh, use big brushes? Because back in the day, we only didn't use, uh, we only did clear powder. And we only, um, uh, you know, there was, of course, there was uses of MMA because before EMA didn't come out yet. So MMA definitely dries faster. So they use a the bigger brush so they get more monomer so they can work quicker so that, that the powder doesn't dry up. Nowadays we have color powder, we have uh, EMA powder. We don't really need that big of a brush. Um, so I think a smaller brush gives you more control anyways. Personally, my personal preference. Don't quote me on that. Watching you apply, I, I can see how you get your sets done so quickly. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, you can. Um, if I was not working, like not living right now, if I was just working like, you know, um, just me and my client and I'm focused on my work. I actually can be a lot faster than this. I usually can get any ombre done in less than 30 minutes easily. Um, ombre is very, it's a big test of power control. And you really just need to know that. And So I'm finished with the base color. I'm going to clean my brush, make sure I get all the pigment and any excess pink out. I'm gonna throw away the rest of the monomer. Um, I actually utilized this monomer pretty well. I got, just got a little bit left, just enough for me to clean my brush. 
And then I'm gonna put on fresh monomer and take out my new dye mix for this. Okay, so once again, that was a hot pink 88 dolly by wig gel. This is all the monomer I have left. Not that much, right? You see how it has that, that pink tint to it? You can't avoid that. And you don't wanna put this into a nude either because this has a lot of pigment. It's gonna, see? It's gonna make your, your nude tinted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the rest of this monomer. That's why you don't pour too much monomer. You know, check. You, a lot of you guys are using big dampened dishes and you pour too much monomer and you get it contaminated and you have to throw a lot. You only need about, this is about 30 milliliters. I pour about half of this if I ever do ombre. I do one color, I only use half of it. Um, my brush is clean. Throw away this excess. myself a little bit more not all the way full just what I needed and then I'm gonna take out this nude I mixed and we're gonna do the ombre portion of it Still gotta encapsulate this later. Do a little bit more here to give myself a little bit more blend. It dried up a little bit quicker than I thought it would. There we go. When I teach my salon ready courses, I definitely just teach. I teach. I'm very, I'm very focused on ombre because I think the ombre is a very nice and easy design for a lot of students to do. Um, focus on this, uh, just getting the structure of the nail. That's what it means to be salon ready, actually. To be ready to be able to do sets under an hour, good structure, glass, no lifts. Sometimes you have a little bit missing spots, you can also put a little more powder up here, so no problem. Make sure the ombre is consistent. Consistent blends. I can use a little bit more here on the side walls here. It's gonna annoy me if I see too much of that later. <laughs> Thank you. Not the best. I haven't done ombre in a while, so I'm kind of a little bit weak. I'm actually I specialize in ombres. I usually can do ombre pretty quick and easy, but it's been a while since I've done ombre, so it's all about timing. We can show that yeah, the right pull at the right time. The powder is at the consistency, what gives you that nice blend. Too soon, it will run through the whole nail. Too late, it'll be too dry. As you saw on the first finger, I did the pinky. I had a little bit of struggle there. It kind of dried up a little bit too soon for me. But, you know, I've changed my ratio and changed my timing, so I'm able to get that, the rest of that down. And if I needed to put an extra, I'll put up extra.
that one's a little bigger. I can actually show you guys another way to do it for those of you guys that are so new at ombre on the other hand. I'll show you guys how to do it in three steps. I know it's not easy trying to get the perfect blend every time like this, but if you wanted to do other technique, go your blend first. And there we go. Finish with our ombre. We're gonna cap this later. That looks really nice. What do I charge for the ombre? I charge, <laughs> my price is a little bit more expensive. That's why I don't really tell you guys my prices because it's based off of my time and um, what the clients are willing to pay for me. So yes, I'm definitely gonna be charging a lot more than most people average would normally charge. Um, that's, you know, within my rights as a nail tech because I've got myself the level where I can charge what I need. But if you're looking for pricing, you definitely, check with um, your local area salons and see how much um, they're charging and then you can go right around, around there that ballpark it's one of the reasons why I don't talk about pricing on my lives because I don't want to give people the wrong idea and wrong impression that this is what this is what they're supposed to be charging because my pricing of the, is very unique. It's based on my pricing are catered, tailored to my clientele and what they want to do or what they want to pay to sit in my seat. So your clientele may be completely different in your area, your location, your work may be completely different. I feel like um, any nail tech that's, you know, working on prices to definitely look within themselves. And you should be able to find out the price that's worth for you, you know, where you're at, your level and such. I think it's only fair that we can decide that within ourselves because if we know how to do that in the beginning, we'll be able to go up in price a lot of nail techs go off based off price off, you know, the the internet. When they ask for opinion, hey, how much should I charge for this? You get people saying twenty dollars, the people saying eighty dollars. So who do you listen to? You know? And then you gotta listen to yourself. I think everybody has gotten their nails done at some point and had paid for sets that they loved and have paid for sets that maybe they didn't like so much. And then day you look at your set, look at your work where you're at, and it's just like, hey, you know how much would I'm willing to pay for this? Me personally. And you can go from there. Self-worth. You gotta know it yourself. Don't let anybody tell you how much you're worth. That's why whenever people ask how much they should charge for this and that, I, I never give them an answer because I'm not in a position to be able to tell you how much you're worth. I would never want to anyway. So after this, I'm gonna be using a clear and I'm gonna be protecting my ombre just in case I over drill or drill too much of it, okay? and it mixes well enough. There's a little bit of a white in there. It's one thing about nude sometimes when it's not mixed enough, there's a little bit of white or blue or something in there. It's annoying. You gotta catch those. Those specks will come up really strong when you when you do your top coat, okay? A lot of people get lazy and they're like, oh, I'll just leave it there. When they, they lay down when they do top coat, they see the picture, a little, little blue speck, a little white speck in the, the nail. finger of our ombre. I think we should be under 40 minutes at this point with application. Um, we should be almost done here. I 
I should flush my cuticles. It's important because I don't want to seal my cuticles later and make sure I get it nice and sealed. nude. I'm going to take a clear out and use the remainder of my monomer, which is really not that much, but I don't really need that much because I just need a little bit of clear. Put it over where my ombre is and I'm going to pull it through. It just protects it so when I hand file a drill to later, I won't take out the price. Uh, color that I mix, I did like, and usually when I mix nudes, I depending on what shade of nudes I want, I'll always start out with a medium nude or a dark nude, um, and I'll use other nudes to make it lighter. A lot of people want to use clear or something, like you don't use that. You have to use lighter nudes to make lighter nudes. Um, you can't use like clear or something like to make it lighter because it actually makes it marble. So I use like a light nude to make it lighter, or I use a dark nude to make the medium nude darker. And then you add pinks and stuff, you want any uh, tint of pink in there. So you can see, I'm just really just bringing this in. I'm just giving this, this gives me a little bit of structure too. And I'm dragging it through, make sure it's even. at the end of this monomer here. I'm probably going to have to put some extra monomer in there. I got to clean my brush at least. You see, I'm not going to use too much clear to like make my nails too thick either. See that? It's just a nice coat to protect it. Yeah, I got to put some more monomer in this. I need some to clean my brush. But I'd rather run out and put more than have too much because I'm done with this after I'm here. I used to hold my brushes, brush it through. And there we have it. 